Hi, I'm Ryan, and today we're going to look at my five favorite teacher tech tools. These are tools that are totally free, not just freemium, but free free, and not a Google tool among them. First tool we're going to look at is Canva. If you've been anywhere, you've probably heard about Canva. Canva offers their entire suite for free to educators and link to the education side of it is down in the description. With Canva, you can create anything, not only graphics and handouts, but also videos and presentations. And they have it all here on their whole little thing, a whole little toolbar here. Your presentations, anything you can create, it's pretty easy. They have tons of templates, so you don't have to worry about your presentation looking like every other Google Slides presentation available. In fact, this one has <laughs> all 15 pages ready to go. There they are. You probably don't want to do that, but it's there if you <laughs> need to. <laughs> there are tons of photos that you can put in there. We're just going to create a new design just so you can see what it looks like new presentation without any themes tons of graphics that you can put in there we need a better background and you can resize it it if you've used anything else the tools are all there and you used them before the world's most obnoxious looking let's put this picture over there get rid of this one so if this is my presentation then I hit add page the video editing works the same way you put a video on each slide and it will put them all together and you can play them all at the same time very very cool it's very very powerful it's an easy way to get something quick up without putting without you taking a lot of times in it so that is canva the links to go to the education site I just barely touch the surface of what Canva can do. You can integrate with Google Classroom. You can give all your students access to it. It's it's pretty powerful. My only complaint is every time you click on something, it opens it up in a new tab. So better like your tabs. Second tool, Spark, Adobe Spark. It's kind of like Canva. It's not as powerful, but Sometimes simplicity is what you need. You can create the graphics, web pages, videos. It doesn't really have a presentation package with it, but works the same way as Canva. You can click on one of their templates or you can start from scratch and add your own stuff. You can also upload your own graphics. Okay, I don't want to get to know Spark. We easily replace the background. Yeah, that looks safe. <laughs> so it's all pretty cool. You can open this up for your entire, all of your students can also have access to it. And it's, it's a nice alternative to just always using Google Slides for everything or always using Microsoft PowerPoint for everything. Spark and Canva both are totally free for schools and students and teachers. Spark doesn't have the Google Classroom integration that Canva does, but it just depends on what you need that day. So I like to use them both depending on what I need and what I need to do with them. Next up is Loom. Loom is a screencasting software like Screencastify or Camtasia. They're, they offer it totally free for educators. What I like about Loom is they have a desktop app. That's this app right here that gives you some more features that you just don't get with. I'm going to record this in Loom while I'm recording it and something else. It gives you a few more tools. I like the circle down here that we can change the size of it. And the reason it looks like that is because I'm using my webcam to record myself. And so this is just broadcasting what I'm recording and that's why it looks that way. I can also make it go full screen if I need to. Woo. 
don't do that when you're recording. <laughs> and there's also drawing tools where I can draw on top of my screen when I'm screencasting. So I don't have to rely on what's built into the software. If I'm using Google Slides, I can present and then use draw on it if I need to. All oh, very cool. But this is because Loom offers a desktop app. If you're not using the desktop app, you'll use the, right here it is, you'll use the built-in for Chrome and you still get the circle, but you notice I can't take the circle full screen, like, well, sort of, but not as neat as the other way. How do I get that back? Oh, there we go. I can't do it full screen like the big square and I don't have my drawing tools. So you can do it in the app, you can do it in the extension, but you lose some of the things when you're not using the app. The other nice piece of Loom is it uploads it directly to Loom and they'll give you a link, you can share it out immediately. You don't have to worry about uploading it to Google Drive or Screencastify uploads it to Google Drive, but then you have to worry about setting up for sharing. Loom just gives you a link that you can immediately share to people. And they give you some editing tools. You can trim the video down and some other editing tools. But Loom is totally free for school, for teachers. You don't have to do anything. Next up, OBS. OBS is what I use to record this. I'm going to drag this over, which who knows what that'll look like. So there's OBS. That's what I look like. It looks kind of, this is me recording live what OBS looks like. But that allows me to bring in my webcam and it's a little square and I can make up whatever frame I want. I can bring my d desktop in to this display here. So it gives, gives you a lot more control. Basically, you start off with Screencastify to get comfortable. Then you move to Loom when you want to little, do a little bit more. And then when you're ready to go full hog into screencasting, move into OBS. And it has so many powerful tools. I just can't even begin to get through them. But this is what I use to record all of my screencasts in. Totally free, runs on Mac, Windows, and Linux. And it works very, very well. Finally, how I edit my videos. I use DaVinci Resolve, which its best equivalent is Adobe Premiere. If you have access to Adobe Premiere, I'd recommend learning it over Resolve because more people use Premiere. But if you don't have access to Premiere, your school doesn't pay for it or you don't want to pay the cost per month to use it, Resolve is a professional level video editing software. Now, remember at the beginning when I said these are totally free tools that you can use, no strings attached? Resolve does have a higher tier, but those, <laughs> what it can do is geared toward professional video editors which I'd recommend then buying if you were going to do this professionally. For 98% of what you're going to do, DaVinci Resolve will do it. Now, it looks intimidating. Here's what looks my one of my videos that I edited in DaVinci Resolve looks like. So it's not as user-friendly, but it's actually not very hard to get into. If you want me to do a DaVinci Resolve tutorial, let me know. Put it down in the comments or shoot me an email. It's really not that hard to do. And it gives you all sorts of neat little tools. At the end of my videos, I import these graphics, this educate.me and this like button. Those are just graphics I imported and overlaid on the video very, very easily. And you can resize them. Once I select it in the timeline and hit that tool. So it gives you a lot of tools of and it's not that hard to get into. So DaVinci Resolve is my fifth and final tool that I couldn't function without it. I use it even for little minor edits that I have to do throughout my school day. Somebody sends me a video, I'll dump it into DaVinci Resolve so I can fix it. So those are my five favorite tools. Did I get yours? Let me know down in the comments. Also, if you found value in this video, be sure to like it and visit my website over at educate.me. Stay classy.